we need to talk. Oh, that hurts me. Really, Queen? Are you sure? It's fine. It's fine. <sighs> Suck it up, Leanne. We're not talking about it. Ba 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 box burning pals it's the video that you've all been waiting for it's time to update my series tracker why i did like the pump it up music to start with because at the end of this video the music might just be like wah, 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 wah. Welcome back to another video. But this is not actually just another video. This is in fact the video. Since January, this has been my most requested video. I have received so many DMs from you guys asking when it's coming and the answer is now. Coming now. It's here right now. By the power vested in me by Eddie Munson, we are we're going to update all of the shiny boxes on the, the spreadsheet -y thing and see how many good or bad moral judgments I can draw about myself based on my reading prowess. If you are new here and you did not see my last series tracker video then I will leave the link down below in the description for you. You can go and peruse that at your leisure. As I am sure that this video will be, it is a chunky one so if you're pulling a double feature on this I would definitely recommend like a beverage and a half time snack. 2023 was the first year of my entire reading life that I have actually been able to keep up with a reading spreadsheet and if you want to know about some of the things that it told me I will also link my 2023 stats video down below for you nerdy nerds but as well as tracking what I'm reading what I'm buying and what I'm unhauling my spreadsheet also tracks how many series that I have currently on the go and as you guys know as a result of my last series tracker video two squares on my 2023 bingo board from hell ended up being entirely devoted to just finishing series because in that video I started with 90 two series that I currently had on the go. 92 series that I was some of the way through, some that I discovered I was actually all of the way through, some that I had to admit to myself I was completely done with entirely and was not going to finish. And we whittled that spreadsheet down. So how do the numbers look today? Well we went from 92 to I think the high 50s in that video and obviously since then I have started some series and so now taking into account only ongoing series that being series that I'm actually actively working my way through or so I think and my series complete published drop down which is series that I've read all of up until the last book but undoubtedly some of those series will now have more books that I haven't read. We are dealing with 65. We will be looking at 65 series today and trying our very best to whittle them down. A tiny note before I start this video, if it does sound at any point like my computer is going to take off in the background of this video, it's because I'm asking it to record me and to screen record and to run a bunch of background processes at the same time. And much like me, it's tired. So we're just gonna cut it a little bit of slack, okay? Okay, off to the corner of the video I go. I had to take my Fitbit off for this video because last time I had it on and I filmed it and thought that I had actually run a marathon the amount that I talk with my hands but now I have no way of judging how high my heart rate is based on the stress that this is about to cause me. Alright so here is my series tracker spreadsheet if you have never seen it before. As you can see we have a key running along the top here so I am tracking series that are complete series that I consider to be finished, series ongoing series that I'm still working my way through, series DNF series that I have given up on, series not started because when I buy a new book and it's part of a series I automatically add it to this spreadsheet because I know that if I don't I will never think of it again and series complete published and as I said those are series where I have caught up with all of the books that are published but there are still some books remaining to come out in that series and that's not my fault you know it's not my fault that those series aren't complete I can't finish them if the books aren't in my hands so on the right side of my spreadsheet the books themselves are color coded we have a book not yet published so a title that I know is upcoming in the series but it's not in my sticky hands yet 
red DNF and unread, all of which are pretty self-explanatory. So for the purposes of this video, we are only going to be focusing on series complete as they are published because again some of those will have new books that I may have acquired or books that have been announced and we are going to focus on series ongoing. Series that in my tiny little mind I think that I am currently in the middle of. Hardy har har. All right so the first series that we are going to be starting with here is the Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown. You guys know that I have become dearly devoted to this series since I started it in 2023. Since I've picked it up I have almost read a book a month with a couple of little pauses when I really couldn't fit it on a TBR or January which I like took a month off for my mental health from because we're about to go into Dark Age and I am told that Dark Age do be dark. Which means that I have completed Golden Sun, Morning Star and Iron Gold in this series. So although it is most definitely still ongoing, I have made the progress my friends. Also I'm just going to double check but I do think yes, Book 7 Red God, the title is in here but it shouldn't be in here as unread, it should be in here as not yet published because apparently we're not getting it in 2024, apparently we're getting it in 2025 and I don't know how I feel about that. Next up we have the Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland series by Catherine M. Valenti. Now when I went through this spreadsheet with you guys last time around I put absolutely everything on it. Every single series that existed in my house that I had started that I had not finished. And in amongst those were quite a few middle grade series like The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland which were in essence for me kind of nostalgia reads more than anything else. But I really did have it in my head that I had the intention to finish those series when I put them on this spreadsheet. I was really really hopeful that I would be motivated by this to pick them up and to move through them. But what I have discovered is that the middle grade series that I'm currently in the middle of are just kind of nostalgic for me. There is a chance that at some point on a whim I will pick up the Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland series again. I've read the first book multiple times but clearly as we can see I have just never got to the last books and I have this month been really really honest with myself when it comes to middle grade and I have unhauled a bunch of middle grade series that I haven't already started because it's just not where my love lies anymore guys. I love the idea of the whimsy in middle grade series but I never reach for them so although I'm never going to get rid of the books from the girl who circumnavigated Fairyland series and I may finish it at some time in the future. It's not a priority and so I don't want it to be sitting on this list just staring at me. That is the long explanation for what's happening with this series but it will also apply to any of the series that I come up against. I'm going to be marking them down as series complete and I'm not saying that I have completed reading the series, I'm saying that the reading experience for me is complete. Next up we have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Now last time we looked at this it was series complete published because Emily Wilde map of the other lands that had not actually come out but now it has to just be a series ongoing because it very very much is out and I own it I just haven't read it yet so that one is going on the shame pile and that is going back to being an ongoing series. <laughs> oh now an interesting one okay so the next one up is Realm of the Elderlings by Robin Hobb which is as you know an extended universe series. Now if you watched my last video you guys will know that I have read everything in this series except for the last books which is you know like entirely typical for me and I found myself last year stuck at the same point in a reread that I always end up in Realm of the Elderlings which is just slogging my way through Ship of Magic getting to the end of it and being like I need a break. And so what I decided to do was I decided to mark this on my spreadsheet as if it was an ongoing series just like any of the other series so that I could motivate myself to mark it off. But since then I have obviously started the Fits Along. There's a complete read along of the Realm of the Elderlings. We are reading one book every two months so there is more than enough time in there for you to make up ground if you would like to join us. And because of that I am going to go back to having all of these books marked as unread so that I can in a very satisfying way mark them off 
as I go through the series with you guys. And don't pay attention to my spreadsheet for the reading order of these books. I would not recommend reading The Wolf of Princess and the Piebald Prince before reading Assassin's Apprentice. That's just like where it fell logically for me when I was entering it on the spreadsheet. There is a full timeline of it available in my Fits Along announcement video. Again, I will link that down below. Next up, we have the Nevermore series by Jessica Townsend. And once again, we still don't have Silverborn. And there is a little part of me, I'm not gonna lie, that's almost like, do I still care? I really like this series in the same way that I love the Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland series. And apparently we will get Silverborn at some point in 2025, but I'm not excited for Silverborn anymore. It's been so long being dangled in front of us that I'm just kind of like, oh, oh, whatever. So no, I don't think I do care. I think I'm going to be very honest with myself when it comes to middle grade series and I think we're going to say that that series complete for me. There's a chance I might pick up Silverborn when it arrives but I doubt it. And the same goes for The Green Glass House by Kate Milford. I have now unhauled this series and it's definitely a series DNF for me because I tried the first book in my Am I Over Middle Grade series now moment and I indeed am over middle grade so that is a series DNF those are not in my house anymore uh, okay so this is the Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan which is the follow-up series to the Percy Jackson books and as you can see from my spreadsheet I only got through three books in that series and for some reason I never finished the last two but in my very bright idea brain of mine, I was like, well, you could just reread this series. You could just reread The Heroes of Olympus and then finish it. But instead, what I decided to do, because I am who I am as a person, is I watched the Percy Jackson TV series and I got really, really, really nostalgic and inspired and I picked up the first Percy Jackson book again at the start of February and I read it. So now it looks like I'm reading the whole thing through again? Which, does that mean, that mean that I should, okay, maybe it does. If I'm rereading series, maybe I should, just like Realm of the Elderlings, for accountability purposes, maybe I should mark those series as ongoing again on my spreadsheet because otherwise, I might just end up lingering somewhere in the middle of them as I do with series that I have never finished. So maybe now, maybe now I need to mark this as ongoing. Oh, that hurts me. Oh, that hurts me, man. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <sighs> Suck it up, Leanne. Ah, next up we have got Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I also started a reread of this last year and I have not progressed on with it. I'm still halfway through Days of Blood and Starlight. This one ain't moving. Haven't touched it. Haven't looked at it. And then we have got the Seven Water series by Juliet Morelli. Now last time around I was like I really do want to follow on and complete this series because I've read the first trilogy but I haven't read the second trilogy. And you know what? <sighs> I might still do this at some point in the future, but what I've had to look at when it comes to prioritizing series and books in general is how much my nostalgia plays a factor and being like, oh, but I really, really loved it. I really should finish it. When in actual point of fact, I just am not that excited about it anymore. It makes me happy thinking about the time that I had with those first books. I don't necessarily need to feel the completion of this series. And I think there may be a few others on this spreadsheet which end up being the same. So this is gonna be a series complete for me. As far as I'm concerned, I've read as much as I am going to prioritise reading and if I happen to pick them up again in the future, I will do the same as I have with Percy Jackson and I will put them back on my list. Though, I have also started re-listening to the Illuminate books. I started them again in January, so I did Illuminate in January, I've done Gemini now. So I should probably also, if I am very honest with myself, I should also put that as a series ongoing so that, oops, so that I have accountability to finish that because Obsidian was my least favourite book in the series and there's a chance that I would just 
not bother <laughs> if I didn't have some kind of accountability even though that's one of my favorite series in the world like it really really is and the books are so easy to get through but this is the way it works in my brain guys so we are we are doing accountability today we are doing complete honesty which brings us to the memoirs of lady trent series by marie brennan these are books that i was reading aloud to lovely spouse harry and i think that he has gone on and he has actually finished the series himself i don't know how i feel about that one it's such a favorite series up until where i've read okay do you know what we'll come back to that one we're gonna leave that one where it is right now because i don't honestly know how i feel i do know how i feel about this one however I do know how I feel about legends and lattes and it's not going to be a popular opinion my friends. You guys already know that I am not a massive cosy fantasy fan and that I liked legends and lattes well enough. There are a couple of characters in there that I would lie under a train for but for the most part I didn't really care and I was really annoyed when Bookshops and Bone Dust was announced because it's a prequel and I'm just sick. I'm sick of it guys. I'm sick of it. This one was a little bit of an exception because obviously Legends of Lattes was a standalone so it could really go anywhere with it. I am sick of ongoing series, particularly fantasy series right now that are getting prequels before the series is finished. Like finish this series and then go back and write your lore because then I'll read it. Then I'm invested in it and I'm just, I'm not happy about it and I was even less happy when I discovered that Bookshop and boned us just followed the same character. It's a prequel. You could have followed any of the other characters, any of the other side characters that we only got a tiny little bit about and I'm just, no. So this for me, I have bookshops in bone dust. Will I ever read it? Probably not. This, I'm going to mark it as a DNF. Uh, oh, that's a very aggressive read. I'm going to mark it as a DNF because I have read the first couple of pages of it several times and then not bothered carrying on with it. Don't here. Next up we have A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin which is series complete published perpetually. It's never going to move off this column. We're never going to get the final book. I'm kind of okay with that in my soul. I kind of don't even care at this point. It's there because there's still a chance. There's still a slim chance. Next we have the Winter Night Trilogy. This is one that I did make an advance on in 2023. I have read The Bear and the Nightingale but I have not yet read either of these two books and I do intend to do so because I really enjoyed The Bear and the Nightingale. So that is still a series ongoing. Ah, next up we have the Graceline books. <laughs> so in 2020 something, Fairy Loop brought out a beautiful set of these books and they published Winter Keep, which was a book that was published after the trilogy, and then they again published Sea Sparrow and all in those editions. And they're beautiful and they're on my special edition shelves. But do you know what, guys? Am I going to read them? I don't think so. I absolutely love the Graceline books. Like, I love them so much. But they are such a nostalgia read for me at this point. I'm so glad that I have the special editions because they are cracking. But am I going to read them? I, I don't think so. I think this is just series complete in my heart. And it's, that's just the way it's going to stay. And I'm kind of okay with that. Genuinely, I am kind of okay with that. I'm less okay with the next one. This is The Burning Kingdoms by Tasha Suri. I have still not finished this series. And the last one, Lotus Empire, I think we are getting in November. So I really need to catch up with this series because I don't want to then buy the hardback of the Lotus Empire and discover that the second book was just okay. And then next up we have a bunch, a bunch of series that are DNFs for me that are very firm DNFs. So the first one up is Shelley Parker Chan's The Radiant Emperor series. I tried She Who Became the Sun. It was not fantasy as I understand it. It was a historical fiction with some very vague magical elements and it was fine. Like it was totally fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I don't want to read historical fiction with some magical elements. I want a fantasy. Next up, we have the Five Penalty series by Marina J. Lostetter. And my god, this was the biggest series DNF for me last year. This one ended up on my worst books of 2023 list. And, uh, <laughs> hell to the no. It is also gone. 
As Is The Unspoken Name by A.K. Larkwood, which was just not my thing. It was more sci-fi than fantasy in the end. It was not what I was looking for. And again, in my not so humble opinion, it was not what was promised on the blurb or any of the marketing for it and that one is also gone. Ah, uh, now we have the Poppy War series. I DNF'd the Dragon Republic and I DNF'd this series. So, I mean, it's sad because I DNF'd it, but it's also not so sad because, you know, it's gone now. It's not on my shelves anymore. Goodbye. However, <laughs> that does bring us to the Magic of the Lost series by C.L. Clark. And this one's going to be a controversial one, my dudes. I loved The Unbroken. I really, really loved it. It did a lot of things just perfectly for me. I have been to see C.L. Clark twice now. They are the loveliest human in the world, but I dragged my arse through half of The Faithless and I was bored out of my freaking skull. I just could not make myself go any further with it. So this one is a very, very gutting series DNF for me, like a very gutting series DNF. I am so sad about this series you guys but it was just so she said that she did this then they went there then this happened all right next up another one that has already left my house this is the bone witch by rin Chipeco. this one is definitely a series dnf for me it is not a book that worked for me at all we just didn't jive and that is cool next up <laughs> we need to talk next up we have got the king killer chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss. The third book of which we know is Doors of Stone. However, rather than provide us with Doors of Stone, Patrick Rothfuss instead decided to deliver us, I don't even know what it's called, The Narrow Road Between Desires. But quite honestly, this novella was the death knell for me with this series. Will I read Doors of Stone eventually? Sure. Is it essentially the same situation as Game of Thrones and George R. R. Martin? Also, yeah, sure. However, has Patrick Rothfuss also done some things recently that have made me go, really Queen, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do that? And so quite honestly, this series in my head now is complete. As far as I'm concerned, the first two books, I'm just gonna make up my own ending she gone next up we do have one that i can genuinely complete off not just in my head not just like a series complete to me but one that i have actually finished and that is the tea dragon society trilogy of graphic novels i am very pleased to say i finished this one my enjoyment of them did kind of go really really high eh, that was okay but they are the cutest, the cutest series of graphic novels. Next up, we have two that I genuinely thought I crossed off in the last video. For some reason, they stick in my brain. But either way, we've got two mangas. We've got Fruit Basket and we have got Burn the Witch. And both of them just ended up not being for me. Manga's not really for me. And I'm okay with that. It's not a huge loss. It's extremely expensive anyway, like manga in general to collect is extremely expensive and it's so long. There are so, so many volumes. I think it would just stress me out if I got into it. Ah, next up we have two of the middle grade series that I was talking to you about earlier. Chris Riddle is my absolute favourite illustrator ever and Autoline and Goth Girl are two beautifully illustrated middle grade series which I have all of on my little shelves behind me here which no longer have a plant because the cat knocked it down and snapped it in half. We're not talking about it. It feels less like a jungle in here every day and I'm not okay with it. But I am not gonna get rid of these and I will probably at some point pick up the last couple of books in each of them at some point. But for right now, I'm gonna mark both of them as series complete 
because as far as I'm concerned they're no longer priorities for me. I don't want to be looking at them on a tracker and beating myself up for them when there are so many other series on this tracker that I really genuinely do want to read. Oh next up we have got the Lore Olympus graphic novels and I have, that is volume 5 right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah I have now finished this series up until it's published again. So that's sad because I don't get to change it from series complete published. It's still series complete published but at least I can say I have read and enjoyed these ones and I think, I think that I need to add more than volume six now, right? Yes, we are getting volume six in May and we are getting volume seven in October. So I have to add volume seven and mark these two as not yet published. Oh, okay. I'm really, really excited about this one. This is the Athena Club series and it's a tiny little bit premature because I am only halfway through the last book right now. Like I'm only halfway through the audiobook, but I will finish it. I will finish it by the end of February. This is only one of my favourite series in the entire world and yet somehow, somehow, I just could not make myself read that last book. I just, I couldn't do it. Again, it was probably fear of letting go of the characters. Again, it was probably my anxiety when it comes to last books in series. But either way, either way, by the time that you are watching this video, I will have finished this. So for satisfaction's sake, for pure satisfaction's sake, I'm going to mark it off as series complete. I would like praise. Oh, okay. So the next series up is The Monstromologist by Rick Yancey. This is a sort of middle grade with one foot in YA. However, I also have to be really, really honest with myself about this series in the same way that I have been with the other middle grade series that I have marked off as complete because I looked at this on my shelf the other day and I really, really thought about picking up and then I just decided not to. If I'm looking at it like that, like I don't want to unhaul it because it's nostalgic and I love them, but I also don't really have any interest in reading them right now, then chances are that I'm not going to have any interest in reading them ongoing. And again, I don't want to be beating myself up about series like that. Oh, unfortunately, next up, I do have to beat myself up a little bit about this. I still haven't finished the third book in the Aveline Jones series, which is kind of like not only a travesty, but also like a, are you okay? Because the books in this series are tiny. They're like, no, novella length. They are the same size as the We Were Children series. There's no reason why I shouldn't read the last one in this series but for some reason I just haven't been reaching for it. So it's there. I will get there. I also don't know. I added in To Be Added last time around like To Be Announced because I thought that it wasn't just going to be a trilogy. I thought that it was going to be a series, but on Goodreads and anywhere else, there doesn't seem to be a book four in this series that has been announced. And the last book came out in 2022. So quite honestly, I think that I am just going to take that off the spreadsheet so that when this is finished, it's finished and not finished like series complete published because I don't think there's gonna be another one after this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have got the library of the unwritten by A.K. Hackwa and oh my god this series put me into the biggest slump. This one made my worst books of 2023 list and when I say that I am devastated like deviled about that I really really am. I honestly thought that this series was just going to be perfect. It had all of the right things in the synopsis and it wasn't. It was a massive massive flop. Being sad about what it could have been literally put me in a reading slump. So that one's gone. Sadly also The Monsters of Rookhaven is gone. Again I'm not surprised it was a middle grade. I picked it up. I tried it this month. I didn't like it which is a little bit sadder because there aren't a lot of horror middle grade series out there but yeah that one's just going to be forever unread. Next we're here for the rant. So this is the HMRC series, the Her Majesty's Royal Coven series by Juno Dawson. I reread Her Majesty's Coven at the end of last year with the intention to head on to the Shadow Cabinet and then it just kind of fell off of a TBR. However, this is 
very much like the bookshops and bone dust debacle, very much like the Patrick Rothfuss stop giving me novellas and prequel thing. We now have a prequel book for this series. I don't even know what it is called. I think it's just Queen Bee. It is Queen Bee. Okay, so we have got Queen Bee and then we have got Human Rights. That is apparently the order that the books are going to go in. Human Rights does not have a publication date right now and it looks like Queen Bee is coming out in July. Queen Bee is a prequel about how Her Majesty's Royal Coven was set up in the first place and to say that I am salty about this is an understatement. I am so tired. I am so tired of the prequel craze right now. I just want finished series, please, for the love of all that is holy. Just complete the series and then I will read all of your side quest stuff. I promise you I will. But when you start bringing out prequels in the middle of series, it feels kind of like, it feels like a cash grab because it feels like, oh, you're so invested in the series and you're really, really following it and holding out for it. And then they're like, oh, but maybe do you want to buy this one in the meantime? And I hate it because genuine fans of the series will buy the prequels and the novellas later on. That's my rant. But I do have to make this one series ongoing for me because it isn't as published because Shadow Cabinet is actually out now and it wasn't out when I set up this spreadsheet. Oh no, not rant over. That's a lie. Rant is not over. Even my chair's annoyed about it. This is Ordinary Monsters by J.M. Miro. This also made my worst books of last year list. It was awful. I am so glad that it just kind of like showed what the author thought and who it was in the first four chapters and I didn't have to read any more. Oh, okay. Next up, Next up we've got the Lock and Key series. So I had read Welcome to Lovecraft, Head Games, Crown of Shadows, Key to the Kingdom and Clockwork. And I can now say that I have read Alpha and Omega. I have finished the Lock and Key series. This is where you guys yell at me about conditional formatting because these are, this is, these are aggressively the wrong colours. Let's just, you were probably screaming at the screen when I was doing that. That is still the wrong colour. Anyway, I have finished this series and I am so happy about it. Next up is one that Kirsty is absolutely going to roast me for. This is the Jurassic Park series. I still haven't read Lost World and I haven't read it because it's on my Kindle and I'm not going to end up reading it unless I buy a physical copy of it and I'm unlikely to buy a physical copy of it this year because I'm being very very careful about my book buying this year. That being said, I have purchased the uh, Lego Jurassic Park on Switch because it was down to like 2 99 so possibly when I have played that all the way through I will be in the mood for The Lost World. I have just rewatched The Lost World movie and I did forget that Richard Schiff was in it which was an absolute delight. The rest of that movie stinks so badly except of course for the line. It's all ooh and ah now but then there's the running and the screaming. Anyway I'm gonna mark this one as series complete for me because I'm not planning on picking up that book anytime soon. It's complete as far as I'm concerned. Which is great because next up I get to be like, I done read this! I read this at the start of this year. I can't say that it was a fun reading experience, which is real sad because the first two books in this series are some of my favourite favourite thriller books ever. I love Jane Harper. It, my friends, meet me. However, I have read it. It is complete. Watch me go. Next up we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series and the Truly Devious series, neither of which I have finished. These two are series that I want to prioritise for this year in a serious, serious way. Not only because I absolutely love them and again they're just suffering from final book syndrome, but because Good Girl's Guide for Murder is actually getting a TV show and I want to have completely finished the series before I get spoiled for it. I'm quite surprised that I haven't been spoiled for it already to be perfectly honest. Oh, sad. Okay, next up we've got the Flavia Deleuze series. As you can see, I have read four of these and I own what do I own up until? I think I own up until Chimney Sweepers Come to Dust, so I own book eight, 
but I don't own the rest of them and there are more since that book came out and I've just realised that I have moved past this series in my head. So nostalgic for me. The first four Flavia Dulles books make me feel like, like nostalgic for a time that I have never lived in and a place that I have never lived, you know? Unfortunately, I can't see myself prioritising the reading of these anytime soon. However, with this next one, I have absolutely no excuse. The Philip Marlowe series is also a massively nostalgic, I absolutely adore it series. I still, 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 still have not read the last books and I own them. They're sitting on my shelf and I just, I just haven't got around to them. That's it. There's no, I have no other excuse for this series. I just haven't finished it. Would I probably have to restart it to remember everything that had happened? Yes. Will I restart it when I listen to it? Probably not. And I don't know when that's going to be. That's just, that's me being honest with myself again. Same with the Miss Marple series. We know that I don't want to finish this series. I've read everything except for the last two books and the like last novellas which are collected in Miss Marple's final cases and I just oh, I can't bring myself to say goodbye to her. I am going to this year, I am going to finish these books this year, I am gutted about it. I did get questions on my last series tracker video about why Poirot doesn't exist on this list when it very clearly exists on my shelves and that's because I have read 90% of the Poirot books and the fact that a couple of years ago I started working my way back through them in chronological order is really kind of a side quest that I went on myself and will eventually come back to and complete but there's no pressure to read any of the Poirot books. I've read so many of them multiple times so I don't feel any need to track them but the Miss Marple series I do especially because there is an internal chronology in Marple. She gets older as the series goes on whereas Poirot jumps about everywhere and it doesn't really matter what order you read them in. Okay so next up we've got the Diviners series by Libba Bray. Now I'm going to do the same thing that I'm doing for the Fits Along with Realm of the Elderlings and I'm going to mark the second book in this back as unread because I have read the first two books in this series but never completed it and now we are doing a series read along on my Patreon which started in February and I will mark these off as I go and then I will actually have finished this series. Ouch. Okay, next up we've got the Alex Stern series. <laughs> I had Hellbent on my TBR for January and instead of reading Hellbent I went back and I reread Ninth House with the intention of going on to Hellbent and guess who didn't do that. So Hellbent is still on my TBR but I haven't got to it yet. Does the third book have a title yet? That is a good question. I don't know the answer. Let's find out together. The answer is no, it doesn't and it doesn't have a publication date. So it is still sitting there. I can't even mark it as complete as published because I haven't read it. Oh, okay. Next up we have got a slightly easier one for me. This is the Magnolia Parks Universe Quartet, but not really. I think the series is ongoing now. When I read Magnolia Parks, I was very like, oh, I love it so much. It was really good. It was a very anti-romance. It was very messy and there was a lot of things wrong with it and some of the characters in it but I had a good time when I was reading it but as soon as I finished it I was kind of just like Meh. I don't really like the fact that I know that Jessa Hastings loves BJ so much that there's absolutely no way that Magnolia and BJ aren't going to end up together by the end of the series so this one is going to be a series DNF for me and again I am not really that upset about it. It's one that's not difficult for me to let go. Similarly this one. So volume 5 of Heartstopper is out now and I have DNF this series. I did mention I think in my series tracker video at the time that there was a good chance that I was going to end up DNFing this series. My enjoyment with it has gone down through the volumes and I just don't really have any urge to read volume 5. If it fell like free into my hands I guess I might read it but to be honest I'm still dubious like I really don't care anymore. Yeah I don't know I'm just I'm happy to let go of this one. I'm also happy to let go of the Brown Sisters books. I'm never gonna read 
Eve. So yeah, that one is gone. That one again is probably going to be super controversial with some people, but we know that my quest to find contemporary romance that works for me continue, but there is just a chance that I'm not a romance girly and I'm never going to be a romance girly and that's also okay with me. Which brings me to the next series, which brings me to the Tessa Dare series. Again, I have read the first two. The first one is one of my favourite books in the entire world. I have told so many people about this book when I've been talking about romance books and again the governess game was amazing. I own the Wallflower Wager. Again it's on my Kindle. I'm probably not going to buy a physical copy of it because it's on my Kindle and I haven't already prioritised it. Therefore I am probably not going to ever prioritise finishing this series and I also don't ever believe, like I don't really believe that we're getting the bride bet and there's a little bit of like dissatisfaction in me at knowing that it was a series about four friends and we're not going to get the final book anyway. It hurts me a little bit to do that but I'm also kind of fine with it because as we can see I am being increasingly more brutal as this spreadsheet goes on because we still have this left at the bottom of it. Which brings me to the Wayfarer series by Becky Chambers. You guys know again The Long Way to the Small Angry Planet is one of my favourite books in the entire world and I love, I love A Closed in Common Orbit. But knowing as I finish them that I am getting further and further away from the cast in the first book because none of the books follow the same characters really. They're all tied together, they're all linked together but they don't follow the same characters. Doesn't make me want to read the end books in this series and that's what I've admitted to myself. It doesn't make me want to read them. But for right now they're just going to sit there as series ongoing. I'm not going to DNF it or complete it but I'm I'm also not going to do anything else with them right now. I'm not going to force myself. Oh. Next up we have got The Great City series by N.K. Jemison, and for me it was not a great series. I did not enjoy this. I am very, very glad that it is gone and off my shelves. That was 100% my last try with N.K. Jemison. I am not going back. I'm not doing it to myself again. I am done. So we're back to the Illuminae Files, which of course is one that I just added at the start of the spreadsheet, but underneath that we do have the Aurora cycle that I have not finished. Oh God. The Aurora cycle is just not as good is Illuminae. There's no other way to put it. And there's nothing in me that's pulling me to finish that series. But I am going to leave it on this spreadsheet because I feel like I should. Because it is Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff writing together and they do make a certain kind of magic. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. We'll see. I'm, I'm leaving it there for now. We have got two that I got rid of very recently in a sci-fi purge that I did. I cycle through my shelves these days very, very often. I actually do genuinely just sometimes stand in front of my shelves and go, am I going to read you? And both of these books fall into that category. The first one, Ancillary Justice. Who do I think I am? It's leaning too hard into hard sci-fi. I was never going to read that series, but it was popular and everybody was talking about it and everybody was excited for it. And so I was like, mm, I'll do it. But I am never going to read that series. And then next up, Embers of War was very much something that was bought on the back of the excitement about Ancillary Justice, a book which I have purchased twice in my life and now which I have unhauled, unread twice in my life. Embers of War is about a sentient ship and again, it sounds great, sounds very found family. It's about a sentient ship, I'm not gonna read it. Oh, okay, so next up is Morning Glories. This is a graphic novel series, which is like, I think it's 10 volumes long, is it? Yes, and I have read up until book five, and I actually own all of them. So I actually, in the background here, I will get it just to prove it to you. The first two volumes, of Morning Glories that I picked up because I was thinking about doing this spreadsheet video and I knew that they were going to be easy wins that I could read. So I have got the first two volumes off of my shelves and I'm intending on reading them by the end of this month and hopefully I'll just read a couple of volumes a month or you know you never know I might just like sit down and bang through all of them in March who knows. We then have the Mercy Thompson series by Patricia Briggs. This is a beloved series of mine. I have read lots and lots in it but I haven't read the most recent actually let's go back along there because I am fairly sure that the next one has actually been announced and this is annoying for me because this is one of those things where I'm like I can't not pre-order it in hardback I can't not have the hardback because I have the hardback of all of the rest of them but when when 
when am I going to read it? I don't know. I'm not taking this series off of this list because I do periodically just pick my way through it. Oh, okay, so next up we have got the bone season. This is an interesting one because last time when we updated this, I had said, I've read the novella, I've read the first two books, I have got, I think I've got halfway through the song Rising and then I stopped. Samantha Shannon has reissued the 10th anniversary edition of The Bone Season and she has also gone on to revise like the rest of the series because she's like added characters and changed timelines in The Bone Season which then impacts later on. Because of that, I now have the 10th anniversary of The Bone Season on my shelves in May, I think the rest of the books come out in the revised editions. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark these. I'm not gonna reread The Pale Dreamer because that is just a little novella thing. I'm gonna mark these as unread again and I am going to, once May rolls round and this series is actually available to read all in the revised edition, I'm going to do a little like readathon for myself of this series with the revised editions and get them finished. Roots of Chaos, yeah, still haven't read it. Still haven't read A Day of Fallen Night. Do I have two special editions of it behind me? Yes. Am I still stuck halfway through my reread of Prior of the Orange Tree, where I was from the end of last year? Also yes. Am I going to leave this on here because I will eventually read this this year? No, also yes. And I really need to get to the second one before it just like leaves my consciousness. Oh, next up is the Wayward Children series by Shauna Maguire. Now, when I told you about this series last time, I told you the reason why I hadn't caught up with it at the time. Just that every single time that I want to read the next book in this series, I automatically start a reread. And that was fine when there were only five books in this series, but now there are infinite books in this series and I can't do a reread every single time a new one of them comes out. I mean, I know I technically can. I can if I want to. They're novella length. I really honestly could if I want to. But when I'm prioritising them, what other books am I not prioritising, you know? So I know for a fact that Lost in the Moment and Found exists now because it literally exists on my shelves. It's behind me. I own it. And the next one, I can't remember the name of it, Mislaid in Parts Half Known. It came out in January. It doesn't exist in my library, but I do plan to read it and pick it up. I just haven't got to it yet and this one doesn't have a title or a release date. I am going to pick up Mislaid in Parts Half Known, probably with birthday money and I am going to allow myself to read this series through. After that I need you guys to help me and hold me accountable and next time a book comes out do not let me reread the whole freaking series from start to finish again. Oh, okay, next up we have The Green Creek Saga by TJ Clune. I have now read Wolf Song and Raven Song, but I have not read any of the other books in this series. And the next one, which I thought there was only four. Are there five? Have I somehow, have I made this up? Oh, okay, no. Love Song is like a 2.5. It's a novella in the middle. We are not doing that. Heart Song is now actually out. I did cancel my pre-order of it, but I don't currently have a whole lot of motivation to read Heart Song, which, I don't know, I feel like that speaks to how I feel about TJ Clune's books in general. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this series. I'm gonna leave it here, because right now I haven't written it off in my head. Long term, I don't know. Oh, next up we have the other manga series which I tried, which was the first series of Orange, which I also DNF'd. There are actually more volumes of this obviously but I'm not going to put them in my spreadsheet because I'm not going to be reading them. Ah! Next up we have the Sworn Soldier series by T. Kingfisher. I read What Moves the Dead and it was fine. I liked it fine but it was a standalone novella and it really should have stayed that way. And when I updated this last time, I put What Feasts at Night on. And I did tell you guys, I have pre-ordered it. I am going to read it. Do I think that it needs to exist? No. But it's T. King Fisher and I'm going to do it anyway. And now I'm telling you guys that I cancelled my pre-order for this one. And that I don't want to read this series. I want more Twisted Ones. I want more Hollow Places. I don't want more tiny novella shroom horror with characters that kind of had a conclusion in the first one and don't really need any more page time. Oh, another one that I can complete off. I have 
finished Timber Dark. Timber Dark is done. This series is complete. Again, I really, really loved Wranglestone, but Timber Dark was just okay. <laughs> Which brings me on to one that I did not enjoy, The Left-Handed Booksellers of London. I more than not enjoyed this one. Some of the writing in this was like really off-putting, kind of teeth grating and jarring and a little bit male gazy and kind of gross in a few places to be honest which I did not expect from this type of book so that is quite a cheerful series DNF for me that one can go and then finally 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 we have the Atlas 6 series by Olivia Blake I own both the Atlas Paradox and the Atlas Complex now and I have not read them yay me <laughs> That's another series that I need to finish. So that brings us to the end of the spreadsheet. I've taken all of the filters off it. So let us filter on only series complete as of published that I'm still carrying on with and series ongoing and see how many we have left. 29. Oh my god, guys. We have more than halved that list. I cannot believe that. I can't believe how many series we've just binned off. There are a lot of ambers still left on this side of the page but the whole idea about doing these regular updates is that we are regularly going through this spreadsheet and we are regularly keeping ourselves accountable for what is in it. So guys that is it. We are at the end of my series tracker spreadsheet video. I can't believe that we have done that. That felt somehow like it went faster than last time. It might not shake out that way in the editing. I am so, so very glad that from last year, starting with 92 series, we've now got like 29 series on this list. We've reversed those numbers. Because for me, what that shows is not only that I have been finishing series, but also that I've learned to let go of the guilt of letting go of series which aren't working for me, which are nostalgic but I don't really need to finish, or which I have loved in the past but I'm probably not going to continue to love if I read now all these years later. And letting go of actual guilt when it comes to my books is a big priority for me. So if you have got this far through the video, then leave me the frog emoji down below. And I picked the frog emoji simply because it makes me happy. The frog emoji makes me laugh and I feel really happy about the results of this spreadsheet. If you are a series reader, when was the last time you counted up the series that you are in the middle of? Do you know your number? If you do, leave that down below so that I can see it. I am very interested to see how I compare to everybody else's series reading. And if you don't already have a series spreadsheet, have I inspired you to start on? Have I inspired you to go to your shelves and begin the cataloging process? And my god, the cataloging process, it do be humbling. If you are new to my channel and you are now hooked on my series spreadsheet, then don't worry, there will be another update for it very soon. Subscribe down below so that you can be notified when that happens and all of my other videos happen. And if you are a returning subscriber who has got their fix watching me colour in all the pretty boxes and roast myself, then please do hit that like button on the way out because it really does help my channel and I will see all of you guys again very soon. Bye!